is one of the big fruit bats they have on the island. And every once in a while, as they fly around at night, they get caught in the cattle fence. Actually, there were a lot of sheep on this island back in the day. And this one must have got caught there last night. So he's still alive, and we're going to try to let him go from there. These fruit bats do carry a lot of disease, and they'll bite the crap out of you. So you've got to be careful. But look how big their wings are. They did our good, good deed doer for the day. Now all I need to do is cut myself with this knife and we'll all be good. Turn into a vampire. Yeah, all the wildlife's unique. Uh, birds are unique. Just a very, very interesting place. An awesome place to come and uh, tour. Um, besides the awesome hunting. It's a great place to bring your wife, to bring your kids because you just learn so much. I mean, you can learn more in a week in Australia touring than you can in a whole semester of school. Now ants are really, really interesting creatures. And especially when you travel, you know, in your home in the U.S. you see a lot of different types of anthills, but when you travel you see amazing anthills. This is just a small little group of ants. You can see how they make these tubes. Let me reach over here and grab this one. These tubes are hollow tubes and they build these up to keep the rain from getting down inside their actual nest below here. In the Northern Territory, uh, where we're going, they have amazing ant hills, ant colonies, termite mounds, they have magnetic termite mounds. Africa, they build these big chimney mounds. A few days, we're going to the Northern Territory to hunt Bantang, Buffalo, some wild boar, and we'll be able to see some really interesting termite mounds and ant hills. Interesting, interesting how these things can carry three, four, five times their body weight, and there's just hundreds and hundreds of them on this mound. Here in the forest uh, on the island, you can see a lot of these muddy uh, anthills that are attached to the side of a tree, and those are also set up like that just to keep the, the rainwater from getting inside the nests and inside the colony. Andrew was telling me at Kingham, uh, where his big ranch is, that you can tell when it's going to rain because the ants start building these domes and they start preparing for the rain. They know what the weather's going to be before the weatherman does. Very cool. It's a network of roads on the island and really gives you an opportunity to use a vehicle. A lot of times you go to Africa or you come to Australia, places in the outback, you're going to basically scout off of the back end of a truck. This old Nissan here is built in the late 70s. It's been out here on this island for quite a long time. And nice little quiet diesel moving up and down these roads really can uh, give a guy an opportunity to cover a lot of ground and that's the key to any kind of a bow hunt especially when you're in new territory we only have four days to hunt here so we're going to use the truck to drive the roads and just you know look for game a lot of different types of game here on the island there's axis deer there's sandbar there's the rusa black buck here 
saw a kookaburro just back there along the side of the road, which is really cool. That's the most famous bird of Australia. Largest kingfisher. Just drive these roads real slow and just keep an eye out. And, uh, we see game, we stop, and uh, we get off, and hopefully they haven't seen us yet and we make a stalk. Or if they see us, we drive by and get the wind right and come back. So you just really got to take your time, and, and it gets pretty crunchy too, especially in the in the woods. So you just got to um, just go slow. Or early in the mornings it's good because there's a bit of dew on the ground usually. So um, yeah, no, it's a great place to hunt, and plus it's so beautiful. You know, everywhere you turn is a bit of, is a photo opportunity, and and at the right time of year you'll actually you get uh, humpback whales will come right into the uh, into the bays and stuff like that. Uh, so that's you know, it's pretty cool seeing those big guys getting around. Man. Yeah, magnificent. Yeah, especially not much wind around this today, and it's um, the sun's shining, and there's got to be deer here somewhere. There's tracks all over the beach. <laughs> they must come down and eat the kelp. Yeah, they. You see them on the beach quite a lot, and uh, a lot of tracks. And I think they. It's a good source of nutrition. You know, they're trying to grow their antlers out, so there'd be plenty of vitamins and stuff.
good hit. <laughs> good hit. He went uphill. Unbelievable. We did it. <laughs> Andrew and I saw these two stags way over there. Andrew said they're going to come down the hill. We made the move. We come all the way over here. We never saw them again until right there. There's still stags over here. There's still roosts over here on this hillside. We haven't spooked anything because of the wind. Everything was perfect. The stocking cover here is just ideal. Even though it's wide open here, we've got this. Those two stags come right down the mountain to right here, 45 yard shot. I shot the biggest one. He followed his buddy back up the hill. It's almost unbelievable that they go uphill like that, but he certainly did. We'll just give him some time. What a hunt. Rarely do you ever do a stalk where you see him and then you never see him again until you shoot. That's pretty crazy. Andrew, come over here, buddy. <laughs> we got him. <laughs>